is this? Tabletop Island. Let's see what this is all about. You begin to tiptoe through eerie rooms, but watch out as cold, clammy hands close around you. It's Frankenstein. Find the key, get to the laboratory first, and win. Escape from Frankenstein by Waddington. Welcome to Tabletop Island. I'm Bernardo, your host, and today we're going to be taking a look at the vintage board game Escape from Frankenstein. This came out in 1983. Uh, by Waddington's. Uh, man, this is a cool one. Again, I love the horror theme on um, board games, and obviously I had to dive into this. The components look really cool, but let me show you that first. So first you have this really nice board here. Uh, it folds into four, so it is rather large. It has this kind of painted style look as to be expected with a lot of these vintage board games. And man, the just the art style is really nice it's detailed enough and keeps that still kind of fun for the whole family vibe to it um it, it really well laid out you also have this kind of plastic holding piece which will uh, i'll show you in a moment will hold frankenstein and it also holds the cards it has a draw pile and a discard pile man i like how that works there <laughs> and you also have here these really nice plastic keys the keys are just really thin um plastic so they could break so be careful um with small children snapping it um but it, it really you can probably replace it with any plastic key that you find um but there's a reason why these are like this but we'll get there in a moment uh the next component piece is actually this kind of die launcher now this is a three-part piece so you have this really small die uh, mine's is green i'm assuming all of them are green um, but in case yours isn't, it's just a mini die here. You have this kind of plastic butterfly um, a flower kind of piece that has these bent out edges, which are will be important in a moment. Essentially, you set the die in the center of it and this little plastic shell casing um, has these kind of prongs that click in and snap and kind of uh, contain the die itself. It almost looks like one of those kind of electric vial chambers uh, for like a mad scientist with uh, the Frankenstein theme. So super cool and essentially with the those little kind of protruding sides you can hit it from any side and kind of tap it really quickly it will shuffle the die inside uh, mixing it up in that chamber and you'll look and that'll be what you move depending on certain factors. Uh, remember I mentioned there's a uh, spot for the deck. The deck is actually how you move. You shuffle it up and there's a few different um, options on movement. I'll talk about that in a moment. Then you have these player pieces which really creepy honestly. Um, they're kind of like these mindless individuals. Uh, it's just that stare is just kind of haunting and it has its hand out, which is kind of a nub, which confusing at first. But remember, I told you the keys are shaped this way for a reason. That's because in their hand, you can actually put the key around it. That's what you do when you're carrying the key um, to eventually get to the finish line. So you have your starting spot. You're moving to get your key by exact count on the key symbol on the board and you're bringing it back. Um, the first player to do that wins, but you got the creepy Frankenstein here, which is super fun looking. Look, it's so like, it's this nice miniature kind of squishy material. Um, now I was able to confirm after having four different individuals show me their Frankenstein or even just asking questions with a few of them. Uh, I was able to confirm the Frankenstein. They make it seem like you push down on Frankenstein and he can pick it up automatically. He cannot. Actually, if you take a look at the Frankenstein itself, you can't separate his hands. Um, it, you can't even do it with like uh, your fingers pushing against it without using gradual force. If you push against the plastic in any way, shape or form, it doesn't bevel the hand outwards. So the instructions were a little confusing, but I understand what it was trying to say. It has its hand out like this because essentially whenever you go up on to the spot next to the individual or land on its spot, you go up against that player pawn and you push down on it what that meant was you put it over its head and you push down and it actually kind of squeezes its hands around the head but it doesn't do it automatically i was able to confirm that um however some of them it seems like do have a squeaky noise that it can make when you do push down on it um 
to uh, fully kind of press down to pick up the pawn, but my squeaker piece uh, seems kind of broken. I probably could fix it, but honestly, it doesn't really add any value to me, so I don't plan on doing that at all. When he does capture you, he walks around kind of holding you by the head and brings you around, um, which is hilarious because he can keep you in kind of the dungeon area, and your goal is at that point to escape, obviously, hence the name. Now, I did mention earlier that the cards dictate certain movement. You have cards that say, let's say, move three spaces. That's a common movement card. There's also a bunch of specialty cards. Um, it could be something as simple as take fright, move to any space in the haunted bedroom. So you can move to literally any space in that section. That can be beneficial because that could put you close to where you need to be to get um, to the key itself you wish you weren't here change places with any player that means you can literally swap spots with another player which um can set mainly someone behind especially if they have kind of the frankenstein holding them or if you end up swapping with a player who has a key to kind of pull them away from um kind of getting to the exit there is also cards that say activate Frankenstein. That's one of the first instances where you um, utilize that kind of die system here. You flick down and that's actually a number of spaces you move Frankenstein. So he starts in his little section here, which is built onto this plastic chamber on the end of the board and you move him that number of spaces. If he ends up landing either um, on a space or next to an opponent, you get to do that maneuver where he puts his hand around his head and he is captured. And that is where things get fun. Now you are flicking onto the dice mechanism to move Frankenstein. However, you can do it any number of times you want. However, if it lands on a six, then he power loses his power and you send him back to the laboratory where he started and your go is over. So you could get greedy, but that may end up costing you your turn of having someone getting captured. However, if you get lucky, you can screw your opponents over, which is hilarious. Now, when the turn comes back to the player who was captured, they use the kind of flip a dice mechanism that it mentions. That's kind of what they call it in the instructions to move Frankenstein to get it back to the start location uh, in order to at, uh, put him back to the laboratory and get you back in the game. If you did have a key, that is placed back to the other side of the board where you have to go back to capture it. And if you're already captured, flicking the die to a six doesn't have that ability where it goes back. So that special rule doesn't apply in this case. If another player draws an activate Frankenstein card before you have a chance to get your captured piece back um, to the start, then you're lucky because your piece is immediately released with the key if you had one and you are put back onto the start square. With that being said, that does mean that you have a chance to just win the game entirely, which is awesome. So the goal of the game is to get your key, is to go from the start to obtain your key, keeping in mind you have to land there by exact count. So if you need a three to get there and you go five, you gotta go past it. So getting there by exact count can be a little frustrating. However, those cards that put you in certain rooms allow you to get pretty close to it anyway, which doesn't make it impossible to where you're doing back and forth forever. I trust me, it doesn't overstay its welcome in that aspect. Waddington's has done a really good job with that. Now, uh, much like the exact count for the key, you also have to get there by exact count to the laboratory which can be also a little frustrating and it's also funny because it keeps players in the game even though you're close you can still get beat it's happened before and that sucks and the game has so many beautiful components it even has this added plastic tray to hold frankenstein um kind of sideways into the board and kind of have the pieces there too it's just another addition to the plastic tray that when it actually came sealed you cut into two sections one that fits to the board and the other that's just in the box holding components they didn't need to do that but it's cool that they did mine is a little beat up as to where kind of Frankenstein goes, but it's still pretty cool that it's still there and that they even added it to begin with. But that's honestly it. Uh Again, if you're interested in this kind of game, I do recommend it. It's easy to teach fun for the whole family, but the price point is a little high. I believe I paid about $40 to $45, um, that including shipping, so this is on the higher side. So if you can get a good deal on this game, then yeah, definitely jump at it if this sounds like the kind of game for you. 
I love horror board games, so I had to dive into it, and I was so excited to get it to the table just because of its uniqueness and that kind of squishy looking Frankenstein just looked hilarious. And the fact that he could hold your head and move you around is just so funny to me. Just knowing that uh, your opponent is sitting there dangling with a key and can't do anything is just hilarious. But there is a lot of luck. You're using cards to move, much like like a Tornado Rex. Um, not like a Candyland, so don't think it's that ridiculous. But So you still have to kind of plan how you do your movements. Um, but it, there's a lot of luck in the game. So if that's something you don't enjoy, this isn't going to be a, the game for you like most vintage board games. But that's honestly all I have for you guys today. If you're interested in notifications, there is a bell up there somewhere. Or down there, YouTube changes. Please like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate any feedback. I'm trying to make these videos more and more outrageous, and with your guys' help, I have been doing so. Monday, regular board game reviews. Wednesday, weekly update slash talks. And then on Fridays, my vintage board game reviews. That is all I have for you guys today. I'll see you guys next time.